So John, with vSAN, uh, the term vSAN disk group is oftentimes referred to. Uh, sometimes that's uh, um, a bit of an unknown thing for our users. What is it and why should they care? So what a vSAN disk group uh, consists of is a minimum of two disks. Um, you have always one cache device per disk group and up to seven capacity devices. Um, so you can you can start small and you can actually grow these in place. You could start with just these two initial devices and you could add an additional six more. And so up to eight, uh, you can have up to five of these in a host. Um, however, you have to have a, a chassis with quite a lot of drive base generally to be doing that. Typically three to four is, is the most that you'll normally see on your typical 24 drive base system. Um, what is a, a disk group? And so that it's a, it's a, a effectively a, a local file system um, that's tiered that has a cache buffer and hybrid. It's both read and write cache um, and all flash. It's a hundred percent write buffer on that cache tier that initially absorbs the IO and then it flows down to the capacity tier. The capacity tier is what's effectively counted for your, your capacity allocation. Um, what's nice about this system is this lets us blend two different types of disk, either flash and magnetic or higher uh, performing or more write optimized flash devices with potentially lower cost, um, necessarily a little less write performing devices and get the, the blend and the best of performance and capacity price in both worlds. Uh, certain operations are done effectively at disk groups. If you uh, deduplication uh, is done at a disk group level, if you enable encryption, uh, if you're doing that after a greenfield, which generally I recommend that on the front, but or you turn on dedupe uh, allocation after the fact, it'll do a rolling kind of evacuation and load of disk groups. Um, in some of the older versions where we updated the metadata as well as the on disk format, it would also have to roll through this process. Do note that if you have a cache device fail on a disk group, that whole disk group effectively goes offline. So there's some benefits to having more than one. And in general, for performance reasons, for uh, kind of fault domain or making sure we have places for rebuilds and things like that, um, any, any cluster that's not just an absolutely tiny edge environment, really like to see you start with two disk groups. Um, you're just, you typically, by because of how the parallelization happens, you generally double the aggregate performance of the cluster by going from one to two. But there's also those secondary benefits of if you have a cache device fail, um, you can still be using that host for data placement. Yeah, what a nice way to sort of help accommodate maybe some of the performance needs uh, that you as a customer has, as well as uh, providing a little bit more resilience to that hardware uh, or that host in case you have some kind of failure. You know, we never know what what's going to fail. So in this case, it sounds like the if you build out the disk groups in a strategic way, you can do this so that, you know, in case you have a failure, its level of impact is uh, maybe a little bit less. Yeah, it, it helps definitely for breaking up it, your fault domains internally to the hosts. Um, and do remember there are some kind of advanced capabilities sometimes around the, the disk groups, like in a two node, you can actually mirror between uh, disk groups now as of seven update three.